Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Baldur's Gate completionist playthrough uh, with SCS. And here we are after killing Sithandria at the top of the Iron Throne Tower. And, you know, we're really coming close to the end of this this playthrough. And it makes me sad, you know. <laughs> it feels like I only just started. And now we're probably like two or three episodes at, at most, probably, away from the end. Anyway, let's check out what Scythandria had on her. She has these two letters uh, from Slythe, a name we've heard of before, to Saravok. He is very excited at the prospect of being able to kill three Grand Dukes of Baldur's Gate. And of course another clue that they're going to take up residence at the Undercellar, uh, him and his wife. And then another uh, letter from him, uh, apparently, you know, killing Antar was easy. And as always, feel free to pause and read the whole thing for yourself. These are pretty good. Uh, yeah, assassinating two Grand Dukes in their own palace while they harangued the high nobles of Baldur's Gate, no less. I can't wait. Yeah, so he's very excited about the prospect of killing them. And here is Saravok's diary, or journal. And just to give you an idea of how passionate the people are about this game, there are mods, or components of mods, that actually fix the dates in Saravok's diary because they apparently don't line up quite correctly with some of the other dates in the other correspondence I think or maybe with the and the general like lore of the Forgotten Realms of this era uh, <laughs> I, I really um, you know I don't have that installed I, it doesn't really matter all that much uh, the only thing that matters is that you know it, it took a couple of years for the Iron Throne plans of Realtar and of course plans of Saravok to come to fruition. So this is an entry here, for example, stating that, uh, you know, basically talking about that ban, uh, that Iron Throne is banned from operating within Cormir. Uh, so that came into play, of course, in Chapter 5 when we wanted to infiltrate the Iron Throne Tower. We could lie that we're from Cormir and that would make everyone hostile because, like I said, Iron Throne is banned. From operating there, but that apparently presented the opportunity for Realtar to uh, approach the High Council of the Iron Throne and be able to uh, put his plan into motion about, you know, establishing a base on the Sword Coast in the west here, and uh, you know, going forth with all of this uh, Iron Crisis business. So yeah, the Daviorn has established the Cloakwood Mine that has been drained and ready for use. And here is a, a more personal note here. As Saravok, you know, puts father in, in quotations. He mentioned mother in our conversation. How I wasn't to be unfaithful to him as she had. He made it clear that I would suffer her fate if I was. His threats are weak and hollow, and I shall listen to them for only so long. What a very happy family. <laughs> yeah, so he wanted to actually visit Candlekeep to check out the prophecies of Alondo, because I must know if the dreams speak the truth. I will not believe the words of, of phantoms without proof, and the priest of Baal I confronted gave me nothing. He was old and died quickly in my grasp. <laughs> if the words are true, I shall surely groom stronger acolytes than this. And so here is an entry from Candlekeep. The monks here at Candlekeep have been quite helpful. From what I have read, it would seem certain that the blood of Baal does indeed flow through my veins. His prophecies are of course ambiguous, but I think I understand them. He foresaw his coming death and seeded his essence across the land. The children born as a result bear the marks of chaos, have power with no direction, and shall feel the blood of a god within them. The deaths they bring shall awaken the father, and through them he will rise. It does not explicitly say, but obviously this means that death wrought by the children will cause them to ascend. Fitting, and since the father was the lord of murder, proving one's worth must involve an act in accordance with his portfolio. I begin to see what I must do. Death on a godlike scale. So this is of course another confirmation. And here, the monk Gorion troubles me. He seems to have taken an interest in my readings. I must be careful to be more clandestine in my research. I wish I could simply kill him, but I doubt I could safely murder him within this damnable library. Yeah, if only things were so simple, right? <laughs> I wish I could simply kill him. I had a dream this night. My mother was talking to me, but as she did, her face became bloated and discolored. Her voice became weaker as she spoke to me, telling me to save her from Realtar. I could see the garrote cutting into her neck, but I did nothing. It was only a dream. So yeah, a nice happy family where Realtar, of course, murdered his mother, Saravok's mother. Yeah, 
I take my leave of Candlekeep now, and not a moment too soon, for I am sure that Grine has perceived my heritage. One thing that I am certain of, Senashira is, in actuality, one of Baal's brood as well. Senashira has all the markings, and it would explain Grine's curiosity in my studies. Though there is nothing I can do now, I will have to make certain to return and kill the little brat. It would be foolish of me to let one of my siblings live, especially one being brought up by the Harpers, and I am sure that is where Grine's allegiances lie. So yeah, he was able to... Uh, you know, discover, like, or suspect Gorion's allegiances quite quite nicely there, quite correctly. And uh, an entry about, you know, things proceeding smoothly, Malahay being established in Nashville mines, and um, only a few slaves have begun to mine out the ore at Cloakwood, though Realtar assures me that once the bandit raids begin, we'll have a steady supply of new slaves. Yeah, now that's why we basically kill everyone involved with the Iron Throne, even if they weren't in on Saravok's plan, you know, the Realtar's operation here with the Iron Crisis is just horrible, um, just by itself. So here there are some entries about working with the bandits, because Saravok was their highest superior, I guess. Uh, and yeah, the, the captured mercenaries claiming that they are agents of the Zentarim. We have heard all of that already. And now he's out to kill us and Grine. In these uh, in these passages here, and this one is uh, something from much later. Yeah, I must not neglect my journals, so the future dead must know of how the Lord of Murder again came to them. I shall hire a scribe when time allows. Allows. Yeah, things have not gone completely as I have planned, but I will still be able to salvage the situation. Senashira is on the move to Baldur's Gate. If I could manu maneuver the whelp to Candlekeep, then I would have the perfect scapegoat for my plan. My mortal father, Realtar, is there to meet with the Knights of the Shield. He has been blocking all my attempts to escalate the hostilities between Amn and Baldur's Gate, and these meetings will only serve to smooth relations. I must rid myself of them all and assume control of the Iron Throne myself. I cannot allow petty business and monetary concerns to interfere. Terribly sorry, sorry father, but my true parent parentage calls and you are in my way. I shall be sure to instruct the doppelgangers in the exact manner Realtar should die. I think a garrote would be perfect for the task, just as he killed Saravok's mother. And of course, uh, they tell you that this is important and you should keep it. And uh, yeah, this is one of the two pieces of evidence that here. we can keep for a point slightly later in the game. Indeed. Certainly. Certainly. Wow, Jahira is slow. Let's just dispel that slow off of her. Yes. Oh, you critically missed, man, and wasted a precious arrow of dispelling. We're of course not going to be able to, like, use up all of these arrows, but... Still. I'm going to put, um, put on some armor on Jahira in a second. Alright, now we're not in combat. Alright, so now there is one more thing, basically, left to do. It is done. And uh, we are going to, before that, we are going to quickly visit Sorcerer Sundries, because I want to get a particular scroll from there. And just for a, um, a certain situation later. Yes, it is done. Indeed. Yes. What up, Hellbazer? We could buy some potions off of him, but we don't really need anything anymore. Maybe some projectiles, but yeah, we we don't really need anything. Uh, one scroll that I want to buy for, off of him, and maybe if he has some identify scrolls. Oh yeah, I want clairvoyance. We're going to cast that from a scroll at a later point, just to sh show you a cool map that I don't want to waste time on exploring. Yeah, he doesn't have any identify scrolls. That's a bit of a shame. Certainly. I should have been prepared with them because. I would like to show some some unique pieces of loot that we'll be able to get at the very, very end of the game. Oh, but maybe uh, M.O.N. with her buffed up intelligence, because we still have potions of genius, maybe M.O.N. will be able to uh, just identify them with her lore. Alright, so here in, in the Blushing Mermaid, there is of course the Underseller, where our ultimate destination lies. But also, we were supposed to meet Hussam here. It is done. Uh, uh, I think I, I have too much to drink. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, dude, slow down there with the with that boots. You know, one day I'll have me my revenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. My revenge. Anyway, let's talk to him. Greetings, fellow rogues. Fellow rogues. All right, so. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's happening here? Lying, causing terror and murder. Those are my pastimes. Yep. Now Hussam is going to reveal who he really is. All right, so he's a member of the Shadow Thieves here. Uh, I'm here in the gate because of the lies being spread about our organization and the nation of Am as a whole. I'm sure you're aware how you were framed as Amnian assassins while in Candlekeep, or how the deaths of Duke Antar Silvershield and Commander Scar were blamed on the Shadow Thieves. Well, we had nothing to do with it. It seems that someone is going through a lot of trouble to create a feeling of animosity between Baldur's Gate and Amn. Amn has never been interested in a war with this city, and has definitely not been responsible for all the troubles in this region. All of that can be placed squarely upon the shoulders of the Iron Throne, or more specifically, Saravok. So yeah, we can tell him who we are. We can tell that we've been hired by Duke Eltan in the past. So anyway, he tells us about the Underseller assassins yet again, and uh, he refers to them as uh, two night masks. And the night masks is basically a um, criminal organization from the east, uh, near Sambia, from a well, uh, from a city called Westgate. Anyway, he wants uh, us to go to that Ilmater shrine where apparently there is a secret passage to the Underseller. So that's why I said that this uh, Ilmater shrine is slightly relevant later on. And those are basically, these here are shadow thieves. They're, they're, uh, this is her, their um, Baldur's Gate 2 model. Yeah, he tells us about Slide and Kristen, and uh, that we were supposed to talk with that priest of Ilmater. I'm just going to show you that this is possible. Here we can engage in a little bit of a theological discussion about the suffering that uh, the priests of Ilmater, I guess, preach. Anyway, if we talk to him again, now we can use this information here. <laughs> he wants to show us the sins um, of the flesh that take place in the Underseller. Um, yeah, and, and basically if we choose this dialogue option, we're just going to get teleported to the Underseller, which I don't want to do yet. So I'm going to pass on that offer. And we're just going to go quickly rest in the Blushing Mermaid because I want to get rid of this fatigue. And because we have a fight on our hands. We should rest now. Please. With Slyth and Kristen, of course, very soon. And also there's this guy, Evan, here, that has a story about Scar here. Also, I forgot to mention that Sithandria, uh, once she's about to die, she didn't manage to do that in our fight, but uh, she is also one of these people who will offer to surrender, or will want to surrender, and we will, we would have the choice of either accepting it and let her, letting her go, and uh, because she would, like, beg for her life. Or, you know, she would acknowledge herself as a coward and just, you know, be in shame, but we could leave her with her life or just finish her off. And we, of course, we would have, have killed her anyway, so it doesn't matter much in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, here's a van. And apparently, you know, he has a story about Commander Scar and how he was murdered. And apparently, during some night, he chased some, some cutthroat uh, into a dark alleyway. And then the cutthroat apparently shapeshifted, and um, yeah, you, of course, as always, feel free to pause and read for yourself. But it, he was basically murdered by doppelgangers in an ambush. All right, so that's that's the last thing, last kind of conversation in Baldur's Gate City after our return here. Yes. So yeah, let us quickly rest one more one more time. And now we're going to be able to just go into the Underseller and get rid of these two assassins. Indeed. Which is the only thing that you really need to do. If you, you know, maybe not on your first playthrough, but, you know, on your second, when you already know what happens in the story, you can just go directly here, kill them, take their stuff, and go straight to the Ducal Palace. Anyway, here's Zizi, the love bundle. She's, um... <laughs> she, she has nothing to say. Because she's connected to uh, Zar's quest from the NPC project, and she only 
uh, spawns now, I think. All right. Anyway, we need to do some some pre buffs. Nothing too crazy, but we're going to buff Senashira with Spirit Armor. I think Kiranai is going to drink a potion of defense. It lasts for two hours of in-game time, and uh, that should be that should be enough. We might even buff up with uh, protection from evil. Some remove fear. And I think Imon is going to use her stone skin here because there's going to be a serious backstabbing fighter thief in this encounter and I don't want Imon to get backstabbed. Should probably also switch Koran's armor. And we should haste ourselves. Right, and basically how we're going to approach, I think, is we're going to kind of stay in the back and approach with Jahira. Look at Kristen, honey. It's the heroes of the Sword Coast. They're the real deal. We're the real deal. So yeah, they're going to have a little back and forth between themselves. <laughs> slighty, baby. You tell them, honey. Oh, baby, you know me. You know you're slighty. <laughs> Hey you, don't you go watching us go all mushy, alright? This ain't none of your business. Yeah, hey now, my girl Kristen tells me that you all have a soft spot for the Grand Dukes. Sure is a shame about Entar Silver Shield, isn't it? Alright, so Slythe here is a uh, fighter thief of levels like 8 and 9, I think and basically he's permanently hasted and permanently blurred and uh, he has also non-detection uh, thanks to a cloak of non-detection and a couple of potions of invisibility uh, so he can be pretty dangerous with his backstabs but he shouldn't be anything that that crazy and Kristen starts out invisible uh, as was actually mentioned in, in the conversation there and uh, she's a high level mage I think like level 13 or something and um, but you know, at this point, she shouldn't be too dangerous either. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be here with uh, Jahira and start casting uh, Invisibility Purge. And it might uh, it might happen, it might not, because she might get backstabbed and interrupted by Slythe. But we'll see how that goes. We need to get Kristen out of her invisibility. Shut up and blade faster. Looks like tough times for us, honey. Hey, fellas. Guess what time it is. Yep. You got it. It's time to die. <laughs> Kristen, love, keep your mind on your work. We're professionals over here. Oh, we... Kristen, honey, don't break down on me here. I still need your help. They have a bunch of lines. Uh, Kristen has some funny lines as well when she appears. And also, uh, some of them are only when they, like, attack. They're kind of like a, their battle cry. And Kristen has a really good one. I hope we can hear that <laughs> during the battle. Alright, so he enters invisibility already. She has a pretty extensive list of buffs, and she actually casts protection from magical weapons. So good thing that we have at least these daggers for uh, for Kirinai. So we might be able to do something about it. Yeah. So Slythe interrupted Jahira. We're going to fall back a little bit and try and uh, focus our attacks all on him so he can die before he is able to chug another invisibility potion. Well, that was not successful, unfortunately. Alright, his he missed his backstab, though. So that's okay. Uh, she revealed herself, but she is not... You know, her improved invisibility status did not broke. It is done. So let's just approach her with uh, Kirinai here and try to throw some daggers and let's like, retreat and spread out. Alright, so remove magic on Senashira. That was unfortunately successful. Right, chaos on Kirinai, which is very bad actually. I, I sh like I don't know what I was thinking here. I, I should have pre-buffed her, of course, with the greenstone amulet. And yeah, that's that chaos was successful. So what we need to do 
Is we have to dispel her with a little arrows of uh, dispelling, I guess. Her protection from magical weapons. I was like too... She actually did her battle cry, but it was very, very silent. Anyway, uh, let's let's uh, get some of her lines in, I guess, when we have the chance here. 99 buckets of blood on the wall. 99 buckets of blood. Yeah. <laughs> You're all going to die. I'm going to slit your throats, open up your guts, and spoon out your brains. Ooh, blood makes me giddy. I love to see it in great big spurts. A totally normal person, as you can see. 99 buckets of blood on the wall. 99 buckets of blood. <laughs> anyway, let's dispel Kiranai. Maybe she's going to uh, shout her battle cry again. All right, so Kiranai is dispelled. And now I think is the time to approach with everyone. Oh no, it still isn't. She yeah. still has probably the uh, what is your protection from normal weapons. So let's kind of retreat with everybody. Still keep everybody safe. And just have Kiranai for now. It's the only person... Well, you know what? Senashira also has this normal Warhammer that I haven't really been making a good use of. But she also has like... Um, you know, the fire shield blue and everything. Let's just have Kiranai work on her. And I think that was the sound of her um, protection from magical weapons expiring. So let's now approach. Let's try to cast a necromancy spell. That might have been horror, but... Or maybe a skull trap, but she was interrupted. She has teleport field active, so our melee combatants might not be able to do much to her. Actually, I'm going to hide Senashira there. She has a contingency with Stone Skin. Our guys are getting a little damage from that cold damage from the Fire Shield, but I don't really care at this point. We need to get the damage in. No, she says uh, the slit your throats line. Uh, that's that's a shame that she didn't. We didn't really properly hear her battle cry. Maybe we will be able to loot her. Alright, so she has a couple of scrolls. Oh, she actually has clairvoyance. Okay, I didn't even need to um, buy that one. She has a sling plus one, some bullets plus two and plus one, and she has a special dagger, uh, which is a dagger plus two, but it actually is, is a different uh, dagger than that heart of the golem or whatever that we could have gotten... Oh, that we could have gotten uh, before in in the game, uh, because this one is called like Long Tooth, I think. And um, I'm just going to like leave most of this stuff. Um, and basically, that dagger has a higher base damage. Instead of one d four, it de deals one d six. So it kind of has like a short sword damage. Okay, now here's Slythe. And uh, he also has a unique weapon. He has the short sword of backstabbing, which is a short sword plus three. And he also has some very good potions. And he, he also has the two pieces of uh, correspondence, I guess, that we need. And that's the cloak of non-detection and the potion of master thievery. Who cares at this point? So yeah, the first one is a letter to slide from Saravok saying that the time to strike is now. When the party commences on the night of my coronation, you will join up with my doppelganger assassins at the sewer entrance to the palace. You are to insinuate yourself into the crowd in the ballroom. When I have finished my speech, you will strike. If you aren't there, my doppelgangers will proceed without you, and your payment will be forfeit. Make sure to keep a leash on your little bitch of a wife. <laughs> wow. Saravok. Oh, and it also says that it looks to be important. That That is the second piece of evidence that you can present. And I like that one better than Saravok's diary. And here is an invitation that they had um, for the coronation. And now we are in possession of that. Yes. So we can head to the Ducal Palace straight away. Indeed. We're just going to inform the Shadow Thieves. Just to show that uh, that interaction that we can have with them. You've attacked. And here is going to heal yes, in the meantime. The is done. Lying, causing terror and murder. Those are my pastimes. All right, so we basically 
tell what the situation here is. And he says that the coronation, that's happening tonight. If they succeed, Saravak will have seized control of the entire city. We should move immediately. We have to get to the dukes before it's too late. We must gain entrance to the palace. You can use the invitations you found. The rest of us will see if we can gain access through the sewers of the city. I don't know how successful we'll be, so it's really up to you, Seneshira. And yeah, they will not be successful. This is the last that uh, we'll see them in this playthrough. Which is a bit of a shame. It, I think it would be cool to receive some help from the Shadow Thieves. Um, in that coronation situation. You can probably, you know, suspect that there's going to be a fight on our hands. And that would be pretty cool if they could actually appear there and uh, help us out. But yeah, they are not going to be successful. And uh, we are on our own, of course. Yes. Alright, so here's Bill. Hello. And uh, we can present the invitations. And since they are legit, the gate opens and now we can proceed into the Ducal Palace. And we'll be just in time for that coronation ceremony. So here's another guy that we have to present the invitations to. There's... <laughs> we'll, we'll see if I can loot one container here, because there's a potion of invulnerability. By the way, that was Saravok talking. And I think we might actually get away with it. There might be no one to spot us here. Yep. Yeah. I want this potion of invulnerability for Sinashira. And um, in this container... Like, take a wild guess what what is in there. Considering we're in Baldur's Gate, there's a, another Cloak of Protection plus one in there. <laughs> and like a thousand gold. But of course, there's plenty of nobles in there, so they would call the guards on us. And uh, we don't really care about that. Just a useless bit of information, as usual, for me. <laughs> anyway, let's have Koran in his heavy armor. And... Um, yeah, since we got dispelled, let's use this potion of invulnerability on Sinashira, and let's use another potion of defense on Kirinai. And I think instead of hasting, so that we are not fatigued after that haste expires, I think what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to give a nice potion of strength to Yeslik. That's what he's going to drink. And I think we're going to use some of those oils of speed to haste some of our prominent... Uh, damage dealers like Koran, Kirinai, and Sinashira are going to drink those. You know what, maybe even Jahira can drink one. Right, every, everything's fine. And now we just need to proceed. I want, I want to approach this situation having some nice position down here so that we are all in the room because if you approach straight here uh, an event is going to uh, happen and uh, some of your guys can be stuck in this room and it's see don't don't you be so eager there Kira and I we can also swap in your proper throwing dagger and yeah we we want our positions like this and now we can go ahead and see this ceremony. Certainly. Now that all of our guests have arrived, we can begin the ceremony that you have all been awaiting. And look at how, how this looks. You know, there are these nobles, there are these uh, two Grand Dukes, Lea Janath and uh, Belt, and this like crazy, you know, armored guy <laughs> who's supposed to be the next Grand Duke. Like, no one is suspicious of, of, of him. He looks very friendly, very trustworthy, right? As all of you know, this is a special occasion for the city of Baldur's Gate. It is time for a new person to join the ranks of the Grand Dukes. I do not wish to downplay the tragedy that we have suffered uh, with the loss of Antar Silvershield, but this is not the time for us to show grief. The votes have been tallied from those submitted by the landowners. The result was nearly unanimous. What of Duke Elton? Has his condition improved at all? If he dies, who will replace him? What about the rumors of Arm mobilizing for war? Why aren't we preparing for war? With our iron shortage, how are we to defend ourselves? Who will give us the iron we need? What of the Centaurum? I've heard that they may be somehow involved. I believe that Elton was poisoned by members of the Shadow Thieves. They're obviously trying to kill our leaders. 
All of your questions will be answered in due time. You need not worry. Antar was killed by shadow thieves, agents of Arm. If it isn't obvious to the rest of you, it's obvious to me. Arm wants a war. The evidence we have about Entar's murder does resemble the work of the Shadow Thieves, but... Resembles? That's ridiculous! The signature left behind on the body was the mark of the Shadow Thieves! Are you blind and stupid, woman? Whoa, whoa there, dude. <laughs> and one of them, of course, was the, you know, TX voice actor. And I love how the other nobles, like, they didn't have, like, separate different voice actors do <laughs> doing their voices. It's just, like, one guy voicing uh, all of the others. If I may continue, the signature left behind was very blatant and could have been put there to mislead all of us. Who would want to mislead us? Who would want to mislead us? <laughs> Perhaps I could interject something before this meeting degenerates into meaningless bickering. We are here to welcome our new Grand Duke, so perhaps we should get on with it. Introducing the new Grand Duke, Sarawak Enchev. I am honored to be here before such a respected assemblage of noblemen. I accept my new position with full awareness to my new responsibilities, and I will have many of them. I would first like to address many of the questions that had been asked earlier. The rumors about Am's mobilization for war are entirely true, as is the involvement of their Zentarim cohorts. But do not worry, we are not bereft of a defense. Although the recent Zentish attempt at depriving us of the most valuable war resource, iron, has weakened us, it has not crippled us. When my father was most recently murdered, I inherited his control over the western branch of the Iron Throne. They have a great deal of stockpiled iron, enough for all of our needs. I will give this to the city to do with as you will. Unfortunately, our greatest military commander lies on his deathbed, a grievous blow to the city. To ensure that the Flaming Fist is well led, I will be assuming control of the mercenary regiment with permission from its current steward, Angelo. Wait one moment. That is not in your power to decide. Shut up! Let Sarvok speak! Sarvok. Instead of waiting for the war to come to us, we will take it to them. With the Flaming Fist, we should be able to easily take the town of Nashkel and then quickly fortify the mountain pass through the Cloud Peaks. What? Who dares to interrupt? Of course, it is us. We dare. Anyway, all of these nobles are going to change into doppelgangers now. And uh, besides some greater doppelgangers, there's also a doppelganger mage, who is a pretty high-level mage, a doppelganger shaman, who is a pretty high-level uh, cleric, and there's like one or two doppelganger assassins who will, you know, go into uh, invisibility and try to backstab. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try to interrupt the mage with like most of our guys and we're going to have Koran try to interrupt the cleric and uh, Imon is going to go a little closer to get her sequencer with double glitter dust fired and because like the reason why I went ahead with her and to be closer is because there is a bug with the sequencers where if you cast them uh, like outside of their vision range and the spells are actually going to fail. They have to be cast in the caster's vision range. So I want to make sure that Imoen can see like this point, for example, in the middle of them, and uh, unleash the double glitter dust. And uh, here we also have Leah, Janath, and Belt, and we have to defend them, especially Belt, because if he dies, it is over for us. And I think everyone's doing what they should be doing, pretty much. Doppelganger mage is injured. I'm not sure if that doppelganger shaman... Okay, his spell was interrupted as well. Everything's proceeding nicely. Alright, so double glitter dust was unleashed by Imoen. And, uh... Here's the doppelganger shaman. Okay, how's the situation here? Well, one of them got blinded, I guess. Or maybe, maybe two. Or the shaman also got blinded. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. You are getting hit because your stone skin has expired. We need to uh, get some protections on. And we really need to save belt there. We need to get some damage going on these guys, especially... I'm not sure where the assassin is. And I'm not entirely sure if the mage died or not, because he can go invisible. He can go invisible... Um, in a couple of different ways. 
he might have that kind of minor sequencer with invisibility. Okay, he died here. Alright, so everything should be under control now. We just need to make sure that belt does not die. Why are you standing about there? Just not sure about the assassin. Alright, it was lucky that such brave people as yourself intervened on our behalf. Is there anything that I can do for you in return? So here we can present him the diary or the the letter to Slythe. Yeah, the punishment for such false accusation is, uh, accusations is severe. Angelo, these people are the ones wanted on multiple counts of murder. Kill them. And Belt says, these men are not to be touched until I have finished reading these documents. You don't need to read the do that document, but since I know you're too stupid to take my advice, I'll just take your head. So here Saravog goes berserk. And this is going to be just a situation where we can't really kill him here. Well, without s some tricks, I guess. Belt, don't get yourself killed, please. This is going to just last for a little while. Alright, and now uh, he will flee. You and I aren't finished yet, Senashira. I'll kill you just as I killed Gorion. The only way you'll ever live in peace is if you kill me first. So here comes Winsky Perorate and teleports uh, Saravok outside. And uh, Leah actually managed to survive. That's good and bad at the same time. It's nice for storyline reasons. Sometimes Saravok goes straight, uh, straight to her and just like two shots her. Um, and I say that's bad because she might have some good potions, like a potion of invulnerability or something on her. So if she dies, we can scavenge that. Alright, and Belt now says that we should pursue Saravok. And uh, he is a cleric, apparently, and he divined the location Saravok was transported to. And apparently he was teleported to the Thieves' Guild, and we will be able to get transported them there as well. Alright, and here's Denkod. Apparently, yeah, like, everyone's crashing in on the Thieves' Guild these days. So we're tracking that huge armored guy. He's going to say that uh, he went downstairs. Now the downstairs area over here is going to be active. We're, we'll be able to, um, like, use the stairs, which were not interactable um, before. And yeah, apparently, you know, the, down there is the Thief Warrens, and they're really dangerous. Go talk to Black Lily over in the storeroom by the stairs. She'll give you some good prices on equipment. Well, her prices on equipment, as we all know, are horrible. Although, I might buy some potions off of her. We'll see. Anyway, that's all material for the next episode, since we're quite a bit over time. And so, as always, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one.